I think it would be my fourth year on Wings. Oh, I wanted to leave after the third year. It's just getting a little burnt out. I think I had written so many of those scripts, I was getting a little burnt out. Um, and I could have left. I, my contract was up. And they said, we really want you to stay on Wings for one more year. I said, I'd like to come with you to Fraser. And they said, look, Chris Lloyd had left for Fraser. You know, they had already have sort of their team in place. They wanted people to stay back and mind their other asset. And they said, we'll tell you what, we'll let you write uh, a couple of Fraser scripts because you want to, I go, I just, I go, it's just creative. I just, I want to do something else. I want to write a different show. I want to grow. We'll let you write a couple of Frasers, but stay on wings and, you know, we'll pay you more and we'll do this. Just stay for one more year. And, uh, and you can do it. so I wrote a couple of episodes of Frasier while working on wings and those episodes went very well. Um, I was involved in the pitching of some of, you know, some of the stories. Some of it was, of course, room, you know, generated when I'd go in there. But anyway, they liked the, uh, they liked those scripts. And um, so now it's the end of that season and I can do whatever I want. I'm free to do whatever I want. And, um, and two things happened that were very weird. Uh, so they offered me a position on Frasier. And um, at the same time, I got offered an overall deal at Brillstein Gray, which would have put me on Larry Sanders. And this was a very weird thing, you know, for a guy who's been in this business for f four years at this point. Those were arguably the two best shows on television at the time. Uh, well, Frazier was winning everything, and Larry Sanders was... Uh, you know, critically a uh, masterpiece. Um, I remember, so I had, they, the Fraser guys couldn't believe I wasn't jumping at that opportunity, and um, so, so were the Larry Sanders guys. And I, there was a, I was kind of paralyzed with that decision. And I remember one night a couple of friends came over uh, who worked in different businesses. And I said, I'm sorry guys, I'm kind of freaking out about this. I have uh, a big decision to make and I'm, I don't, really don't know what to do. And one, the guy, one of the guys just said, well, don't I feel sorry for you? Like it really was like, shut the fuck up. You are, uh, 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 keep those kind of worries to yourself. Uh, Anyway, I decided on Larry Sanders because, and I remember thinking, this was my rationale. I, I'd already written Frasier, a couple of episodes. I had already worked under the tutelage of Casey Angel Lee. Amazing respect for them. But if I wanted to grow as a writer, this was a very different form. And I think I could grow more by going into something that I am less comfortable doing. Um, so uh, that was a tough call to have to make to let them know that. And um, they were uh, not thrilled with me, but um, it was okay. I started the, the, what was supposed to happen was Paul Sims was running Larry Sanders at the time. Gary Shandling really runs Larry Sanders. Uh, Paul Sims, though, was the head writer, and it's kind of a two-headed thing. Paul was going to stay for another season, and I was going to go there, work there. I was going to have that season to learn the show, to learn Gary, who was a genius, but a complicated and com very complex guy, kind of try to get inside his head, learn the rhythms of that show. I'd never worked on a single camera show before. I had never run a show before. But at that point, after Paul left, 
I was going to go, I was going to run it. That's what I was told. So I was being offered, it's just bizarre. At that point, a guy who had never run a show, who had never worked on a single camera show, was saying, they were saying, we're, come in, we're going to groom you for a year, and you're going to take over the, this incredible show. So again, being a guy who says, I can do that, uh, I said, fine, I'll, I'll, let's do that. So I went into that, and um, as we're about to start, um, and I'm still working on Wings at the time, I had like a couple, like a month or two left, but I had to start, Larry said, I was doing two. Paul Sims quits before I, before I start. He quits, they get in a big fight and he's out. And they're like, okay, you're the guy. Wait, I don't know anybody here. I don't know the show as well as anybody here. I'm the guy. And really what that meant was, and I didn't realize it till much later, it meant you're the guy with the target on your head now. That's what, really what that job was. You're going to be the punching bag. And um, I, did, I was too naive and too confident to know what I was walking into. Um, I started, Wings ended. It was lovely. They were very gracious. I got a nice little send off. Um, I had done uh, about 100 episodes of Wings. Um, I started on Larry Sanders. I, uh, at first it was a love fest. Uh, I was, you know, Gary, I would hang out at Gary's house, learning Gary, I would be the show, we're talking about ideas. Oh, Gary calls my agent. I love his ideas. It's all great. It's all good. And, um, you know, to make a long, sad story short, I s slowly felt like, this is um, not going well. Um, I didn't know the show as well. I didn't know the specifics of Gary. That's a very um, specific head, and it takes a while to really understand it. I feel like today I could go in and do that. Then I don't think I was anywhere near prepared for what I had to do. Um, we wrote, there were good experiences there. I mean, I wrote an episode with Gary um, that was bizarre. Uh, life would imitate art. Art would imitate life there. You didn't, one minute you'd be talking about the show and about the craziness of the show, and the next minute you were like writing a scene from the show, and the next minute you realized you were talking about real life. And it, that would happen all the time. The, the, the mirror would turn around, you know, and, and, and you didn't know what side of, the, of it you were on. Um, I remember one time, uh, I was in a, we had done a rewrite and Gary wasn't happy with the rewrite and Gary and the producer called me in and, uh, and they he's like, look, I just don't like this. Rewrite. I go, why? He goes, it just feels like it doesn't feel real to me. I said, well, what doesn't feel real about it? He said, like, right, like right here, for example. Um, and the, the producer is kind of sitting behind him annoyed and, uh, uh, he goes, what doesn't feel real here? And he goes, like right here, like the, these two characters, they say the same thing in unison. And, and, and that doesn't, and, and I go, well, what's wrong with that? And um, at the same time, he and the producer go, that doesn't happen in real life. They both said it at the same time. And I went, yeah, you're right. You know, like, like I had moments like that. Um, but there were, then there were incredible moments too. Like there was, we wrote an episode about Gary, Larry needing for sweeps, needing to get his friend, Artie wants him to get his friend Warren Beatty to be on the show because they need guests for sweeps. In the meantime, Gary in real life had become friends with Warren Beatty. So I'm sitting at Gary's house and we're writing this episode and we're getting to the scene where he has to call Warren Beatty Found out Gary hasn't even asked Warren Beatty if he'll do it. So Gary gets on the phone and is now calling Warren Beatty to ask him if he'll be in an episode in which Larry asks his friend Lord Warren Beatty to be on the show. And I'm just sitting there like trying to take notes and as, as Gary's asking him and there, those kind of moments happened all the time. Um, 
But anyway, there was one night where uh, the, the model Vendela was on the show. And um, uh, she was doing a set piece where they were on the talk show. And she decided on her own in a take that as she storms off the set, she's supposed to storm off the set, that she's going to dump her cup of coffee or water, whatever it was, on the desk as she walked off. She just decided to do it. And, uh, and Gary, she did it, and it kind of a little bit got on Gary. And the, he got this look on his face, and he just, he just looked around, and he's like, why, why did that happen? Why did that happen? And I could just tell. There was something I go, and he walked off, and he needed to go cool off in his trailer for a while. And I turned to this uh, Maya Forbes, who was a writer on the show at the time, and I said, mark my words, I'm going to get blamed for that. And she said, shut up. You are so crazy. Shut up. There's no way you're going to get blamed for that. Next morning, I get a call. Uh, Why don't you come into the office? We're going to talk on Monday from Brad Gray. And... Uh, uh, The, the, the meeting on Monday morning was basically, you're not fired, but it's been my experience that when Gary loses confidence in someone, uh, you're, he's not going to get it back. Um, so it might be uh, best if you, uh, you know, think about something else you could do now, because I just had signed this big overall deal with them. And he was, Brad was nervous and kind of, I'd never seen him like that. Uh, I came home, I, I came home and I was really bummed, but I couldn't believe the weight that was off my shoulders. It was ridiculous. Like I was carrying around, it took me a long time to kind of recover from, because I was doing my best to get into Gary's head. And that is a, uh, <laughs> that's a cold, I mean, that is a dark, mysterious place with a lot of hidden corridors and, and I mean, I remember once saying to my uh, friend of mine, I was with this friend who's not in the business, and we were doing something on Saturday afternoon, and he says something, I go, oh, you must hate me right now. He's like, no, why would I hate you? And I realized I was, this was like I was being Gary. I was, I had this, like, I was trying so hard to get into his psyche that uh, it was screwing me up a little bit. Um, anyway. My agent, Jay Suris, uh, said to me, so what do you want to do now? I said, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm embarrassed about this. Um, I'd never been, I, while I wasn't technically fired, uh, I think that was just semantics. Uh, and he said, what if I can get your job back on Fraser?" I said, I'd be embarrassed to ask, you know. I, I, chose the other ones. I, I'd feel silly. He goes, let me make a call. And uh, he called, uh, because I had my deal with Brillstein Gray. So he called Chris Lloyd and, um, and asked, and Chris said, yeah, uh, we'd love to have him. Uh, he cleared it with the guys who were, again, gracious. They got me, uh, I was still on an overall deal with Brillstein Gray. I said to Brillstein Gray, like whatever, so just pay to the Fraser people, pay what you have and you'll get me, you know, uh, whatever you can afford, you know. So it was like a low to mid-level salary. And because I was still getting paid by Brillstein Gray, the money was going to go to Brillstein Gray. And I said to Brillstein Gray, you know, you owe me this. Like, I'm doing this. And and I'll develop a show while uh, I'm working on this, but it can only help me to be on the show and, and take it and, and you owe me. Um, so uh, I returned to Fraser. I think I, I did, I may have done four days a week, I'm not exactly sure. Um, and then uh, wrote a couple scripts and started developing Just Shoot Me.